Yo, Fisk, how we doing, man? All right, Ben. So I've already kind of introduced you to the people a little bit. So just tell them a little bit about your channel, and we're gonna get started with some New York Giants talk and all that good stuff. Oh well, you know me, man. The hardest voice in sports, man. I tell the truth. He gives y'all that medicine. What you said? He, he, you give him that medicine. Yeah, man. I give you that medicine. I give you that rubber test. So if you don't like hearing the truth, don't come to my channel. <laughs> all right, all right, fair enough. But either way, okay, be sure to subscribe to his channel. Also, subscribe to his, his gaming channel as well. He's He's got a new gaming channel out as well where he talks about Madden and things of that nature. So let's get started, man. So can you hear me Can you hear me pretty well? I hear you loud and clear. All right, Ben, I can hear you too. All right, so let's talk about your New York football Giants, your team. I'm not a Giants fan. Most of you guys that have been following this podcast know this. So... I think that I'm pretty unbiased when it comes to the Giants. So, listen, last year, I didn't believe in the Giants. I had them going 3-13. and They actually proved me wrong slightly. They won one more game than I thought be the way. The Giants were trash last year, okay? And the reason why I did not really believe in the Giants was because I didn't think that Eli Manning was that good anymore. I'm higher on Eli Manning than most people as far as a prime Eli Manning goes. But either way, his days are numbered. I understand taking a quarterback. I felt the Giants need to take a quarterback, but I wouldn't have taken Daniel Jones. Now, Daniel Jones so far has proved me wrong. He had a pretty good rookie season, but, I mean, the team only won four games. The offensive line was terrible. The defense wasn't great. I still think the Giants need to add to their wide receiver core to continue to get better. And listen, I was not behind the Ben McAdoo hire, and I wasn't behind Pat Shermer that much either. So, Look, you know, D Daniel Jones obviously burst onto the scene versus Tampa Bay. You got your nice little win there, beat Washington. And then Fitz Vegas was on his channel talking about, man, the Giants might make the playoffs. That's literally what he said. That's literally what this guy said. And they wanted to lose nine straight games. Now, Eli Manning did beat the Gi did beat um the Dolphins because Daniel Jones was hurt in that game. Fitz Vegas takes a little bit of issue with Eli playing that game and things of that nature. We'll talk about that probably later. You know, Daniel Jones has five touchdown passes versus the Redskins. You guys win that game. But overall, I will say it was a disappointing season. But the one thing I can say about the Giants is they found their franchise quarterback. And I do think that Dexter Lawrence is a bright spot. The defensive tackle that you guys drafted at number 17 overall. Um, Will Hernandez, a very good young offensive lineman. And... Look, I wouldn't have picked DeAndre Baker. I would have went Greedy Williams or another defensive back. But again, once DeAndre Baker kind of started to know the playbook a little bit more, once he started to get more comfortable, he started to play better. So I think that if you put DeAndre Baker in the right in the right scheme, if you coach him up, he'll be all right. I don't know if he'll be a true shutdown corner, but there's something to work with right there. So look, it was a bad season. You picked number four overall, but at least you found your franchise quarterback. We'll get to Daniel Jones in a little bit, but... Talk about your thoughts on the Giants' season this year and just overall what are your thoughts heading into next year and things of that nature. Well, I think the biggest thing with the Giants was transitioning the old with the new. All right. The biggest problem last year was we had a corpse quarterback in Eli, and we have a, a offensive coordinator masquerading as the head coach in Pat Sherman. So the biggest takeaways from last season is sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta get worse before you get better. So last year, Daniel Jones came onto the scene, you know what I'm saying, came out swinging, down eighteen points his first game, came back and beat the Bucks. That was a sign of greatness. That was a that was foreshadow. That was just a sign of the great things that was gonna come this year. Daniel Jones, in my opinion, had the best rookie season. Out of, all the quarter, out of all the rookie quarterbacks, he's the only one that showed MVP promise. I mean, the four touch, the multiple four touchdown games, the five touchdown games, being down by 18 points on the road. I mean, he, if you put Dwayne Haskins and Kyler Murray in the Giants jersey, and they have the same season or MVP. But since the media doesn't like the Giants, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So basically what I'm saying is losing those games is a blessing because we get rid of Sherman. We get a real head coach, a general, and Joe Judge, somebody who's going to hold players accountable and actually gets respect in the locker room. And then Daniel Jones gets a great offensive coordinator in Jason Garrett, somebody who I've yet to see have bad quarterback play. Whether that's Tony Romo, a brief stint with Mark Sanchez, or Dak Bortles, 
it don't matter. You know, Jason <laughs> Garrett, he does his job. So the Giants are really set up in a position to succeed. We got to hold that. We got to hold the L with the Leonard Williams trade. But other than that, you know, everything from last year, in my opinion, was a victory. I, I can't. I can't be happy with my Giants right now. At the end of the day, I'm disappointed in the way we went about handling the offense in the offseason as far as getting wide receivers, things of that nature. But the number one thing Gettleman had to do was get a quarterback and get a coach. And he did that. So as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, you, you people overthink football. And, you know, with me betting sports for a living, I have a different perspective on sports as a whole. Y'all overthinking. And at the end of the day, when you look at the Giants and you look at this season and you look at what your expectations are, football is simple. Don't overthink it. Who's got the better head coach? Who's got the better quarterback? I don't care about the whole I don't care about the defense. That's fact. I don't care about your I don't care about your slot corner. <laughs> I don't care about none of that. Who's got the better coach? Who's got the better uh, quarterback? And when I look at the Giants and I look at their schedule going forward, I mean, I don't understand why people sit here and just, just assume we're going to lose to the Bears. Who's got the better quarterback? Who would you rather have, Trubisky? Because you know Trubisky's going to start. They're not going to start Nick Foles. They're still going to get Trubisky a chance to, to uh, prove himself. Potentially. So who would you rather have? Trubisky I'd rather have Daniel Jones. Jones. Okay, so that's a victory, right? That's one of the games that everybody says we're going to lose, okay? The 49 Oh boy, We're come at on. Fizz, don't here. do it. Don't hear do it. Right quick, right? Hear me out. I'm hearing you. Hear me out right quick. If it's a close game, who would you ever have? Daniel Jones or the other guy, Jimmy G? Close game, who you want? Honestly, I got to pick Jimmy G. He's more proven. Proven? The last time he was in a close game, he overthrew a man. Okay, but it was in the Super Bowl versus Patrick Mahomes. Fizz, come on now. What you mean versus Patrick Mahomes? I don't care if it was versus Dan Marino or Joe Montana. <laughs> what you, you mean? Got a 10 point lead. You got a 10 he point was lead. in the Super Bowl. Your guy won three games. <laughs> yeah, but you're missing the point, though. It's a new season. Regular season, game on the line. Like I said, I'm a sports better. I look at things different. So at the end of the day, if you had to put your money on it right now, and game for your life, who would you ever have? Two minutes to go. Jimmy G, Daniel Jones. I mean, I got to pick Jimmy G. Like I said, he's more proven. I do think that Daniel Jones has potential to be better than Jimmy G, but right you now... You really don't like living, do you? <laughs> well, I guess not. I mean, I don't think you like living either. Um, I, mean, I, I, I think I'm so, good because at the end of the day, I know my guy not missing wide open play. <laughs> I'm not going to miss nobody wide open 25 yards down the field. Well, I think that my Jimmy guy, G... Go ahead. I'm just saying, if you look at Daniel Jones' highlights, you know, this is this thing, this thing on Twitter, right? Going around talking about, well, Daniel Jones had like a 48% completion percentage down the field or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I sent you that. I sent you that. Right. <laughs> Did you count how many of them passes he completed while being freaking hit by, uh, while being hit in the pocket? This guy, Daniel Jones, has more highlights while being sacked than anybody. If you look at some of these 30 yard dimes he's throwing down the field, like the one against the Cardinals, the, the, his first touchdown to Darius Slayton, that damn pass versus the Bears. This guy, Daniel Jones, got like two, three defenders draped on him, throwing straight strikes. You gotta be kidding me, man. This guy, Daniel Jones, is a legend. Alright, he makes a legend. <laughs> The Keep going, Fizz. Make, bro. That's it. You know, you, if you can see it, you know it when you see it, bro. That's the thing. When it comes to quarterbacks, you know it when you see it. You, it don't take it, – it, it, it's like a singer. I hate I, I hate you to say it. It's like a rapper or a singer, right? I can hear a rapper rap a whole song. I give him a 16. I give him a song. And I know if you're hot or not. It don't take a rocket science to tell me if you got balls. Hey, real, real quick. Hey, real quick. I want. I mean, to cut you off, but I, I tend to agree. You know, it's. I think that it's kind of hard to spot who's who's good and great. Maybe not necessarily, but either way, I think you can. I think you can spot bad in the NFL pretty fast. Exactly. Josh Rosen. We saw it. We saw it immediately. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So what I'm trying to say is, 
if you look at Daniel Jones' numbers, and I'm sitting back, I'm like, okay, look at the quarterbacks we played next year. Jimmy G, we can win that. Okay. Trubisky, we can win that. Kyler Murray, we can win that. Um, Baker Mayfield, we can win that. Like, come on. It's not like the Giants have the hardest schedule in the world. The only game that I know we're losing is the Ravens. Other than that, the Ravens and at Philly, because we never win in Philly. Other than the Ravens and at Philly, we can literally win every game on the schedule. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discuss the schedule right here. I will say this. I don't think you're beating the 49ers, Fist. I just don't think that that's a realistic expectation for your team. I, I think Daniel Jones has a bright future. We'll get to him in a little bit. We're, we'll dive more deep in him you know, later in this podcast. But again, the 49ers, they have a better defensive line. They have a better offensive line. They have a pretty deep wide receiver core. You know, George Kittle's pretty good. Very good run game. Got to give you a loss right there. Um... I think that, honestly, as far as the NFC East teams, I know you're not going to like to hear this, Fitz, but again, I'm here to give you the medicine that you need, you know. You've been, you know, skipping my doctor's appointments. You know, I'm Dr. Juice. I give you the medicine that you need, and I'll tell you what you need to hear. You're not sweeping through the NFC East. I I agree that you're probably going to lose at Philly. I think you have potential to split with Philly just because I think this Giants team is going to be improved. Um, I think that Saquon Barkley is one of the best running backs in football. Probably the best running back in football when healthy. Daniel Jones showed a lot of promise. And again, you have some nice young players. I like what you did in the draft. But again, I think you got, I, I think I got to say you split with Philadelphia. I think you split with Dallas. I'm not the biggest Dak Prescott fan or the, or Dak Bortles, as you like to call him. But again, Dallas has talent. And again, you guys were a four win team last year. Okay. And again, I know you're not going to want to hear this, but you're not sweeping Washington, okay? Washington has one of the best. You're not sweeping Washington. You're not. Okay? You're not sweeping Washington. When's the last time Washington beat us? Answer that question. <laughs> hey, I don't remember either way. This year, they listen, they had a pretty good draft. I like I like Chase Young. Their defensive line is very good. I think that unit is going to be elite. I think that unit is going to be elite. And anytime you're elite at something in the NFL, you can win a lot of games. I really do. Hey, you can laugh all you want, but but come season time, you're not sweeping the Redskins. I think that Dwayne Haskins has some promise. We'll get to him a little bit down the road. But either way, so I think that you probably go three and three or four and two in the NFC. I think that's pretty realistic. Now, looking at Tampa Bay, I think that's probably gonna be a loss. I like Tampa Bay this year. Um, I think they have a pretty good roster at Seattle. Potentially is a loss. Um. At the Ravens, like you said, is a loss. I think that the 49ers, the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Buccaneers, the Redskins, and Seattle. I don't want to cut you off, but give me a number. What's your number on the chat? Give me a number. I think that worst case scenario, they win five games. Best case scenario, they win seven. I'm more in the five win to six win range. Okay, now hear me out right quick. Now, let me ask a question. We started off talking about quarterbacks, right? Yep. Now, let me ask a question. Daniel Jones, Joe Burrow. I think Joe Burrow was a better prospect. I gotta go with Joe Burrow. So you so 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 you ever have rookie Joe Burrow the second year Daniel Jones? I mean that you get the you have to play the Bengals on the road. I think that the Bengals have some talent on the outside of wide receiver. So I think that Joe Burrow's gonna look pretty good, you know, as the season goes on. Yeah. So Zach Taylor, you're sold on Zach Taylor. So so you think Zach Taylor How am I sold on Joe Judge? What's Joe Judge's resume? He's got more pedigree than Zach Taylor. Well, Zach Taylor has been a head coach for at least one year, so I think that he's been through. And he was garbage. I know he was garbage, but he had trash Andy Dalton and a bad roster. The big ones, I think, are going to be improved. Right. Okay, so basically, what you're saying is Daniel Jones and Joe Judge are trash. Because if, if you say that, I don't think that Daniel Jones is trash. I think that Joe. So basically, what you're saying is, if you're saying that the Giants can't beat the Bengals, who are barely going to win five games, <laughs> then we're trash. Well, I will say this. I will say this. I think that what Joe Burrow is going to bring to the Bengals is sort of what Kyler Murray brought to the Arizona Cardinals last year, and what, what Baker made to the Cardinals last year. They won more, way more games than they did the previous year, and Kyler Murray won Rookie of the Year. And by the way, this whole crap about, oh, Daniel Jones is better than Kyler Murray, you know that's not true. You know it's okay, not okay, true. You thing. know what? All right, so let me just finish my Giants point right quick. Let me just go get ahead. to the crap Go ahead. Situation. Yep. We're sweeping Washington. I don't want to hear it. We're not debating that. We're sweeping Washington. Okay. We're split with the Cowboys and Eagles. That's four wins in the division. So okay. We're four wins in the division, right? That's four wins. Yep. I'll 
don't give a damn what you say. We're not losing to Zach Taylor and, 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 and Joe and Joe Burrow. That's five points. Okay. We're beating Cleveland and Arizona. Ooh. That's seven. Mm. All right, that's seven. We got okay. both of them at home. That's seven. All right? And we're beating Trubisky. So that's eight. Maybe. Maybe. So the floor is eight. All right, the floor is eight. Now, floor is eight. As, as far as wins like Tampa Bay and the 49ers, whatever. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to argue with you. If you want to give them no, if you want to say we're going to lose those five, fuck it, I don't care. But at the end of the day, we're getting eight. That's the floor. I point. don't see it, Fisk. That's the point. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't it. know what you're smoking if you really think that Kyler Murray is going to beat the Giants next season. Like, I just he beat him this past season. season. He didn't have to do yeah, much in that game, but he beat him this past season. year. This is a new team. We got a left tackle now. This is a okay. new team and a left tackle. And he got DeAndre Hopkins. He got DeAndre Hopkins. Damn it, they have prime Randy Moore. At the end of the day, <laughs> they have no offensive line. They drafted Isaiah Simmons. Instead of an offensive tackle, they needed an offensive tackle. This dude, Kyler Murray, is going to get slaughtered next year. By your pass no. rush. Who is your pass rusher that Kyler Murray should be scared of? Marcus <laughs> Golden? <laughs> Kyler Fackerel? Do you even need a great pass rush to hit Kyler Murray with that trash offensive line? Do you even need a good pass rush to hit I Kyler mean, Murray? hey, Kyler Murray is one of the most mobile quarterbacks in football. He can shake and bake, man. You can't touch Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray is a real G, man. He ain't Lamar Jackson, bro. Stop. He's not Lamar Jackson yet. <laughs> All right, so. He's never going to be Lamar Jackson. I think that Kyler Murray has, a, has much more potential than you're willing to give him credit for. But I will hey, say. One game Kyler Murray had last year that was better than Daniel Jones' game in Washington. Name one game. I mean, that's one game. You can, you can talk about. One game he had better than the 18 point comeback in Tampa. Name one game. I mean, he had a pretty good game versus the Falcons. He had a pretty good game versus the what Buccaneers. I don't. I mean, that's for you to judge. I don't. I think personally that Kyler Murray played pretty well. And I think that he is a better quarterback than Daniel Jones, and he had a better rookie year for a couple of reasons. He was, <laughs> yeah, he, he won more games. He he was more consistent. He was more accurate. Consistent. How you forget? Because he was. Go watch the games. Go watch the film. He's more consistently accurate. He's better down. He. he I think that he has. As good of arm as Daniel Jones, I think that he's a pretty good runner. He's a better runner than Daniel Jones. And I just think that Kyler Murray is just, he does a little things better. I think that Daniel Jones, he had more wow moments at times than Kyler Murray, but Kyler Murray does the little things better. And I think that he just has overall more potential. Oh, my gosh. He does, Fisk. You couldn't give me no solid And that's my problem with everybody who, Thinks that a Dwayne Haskins or a Kyler Murray has a, a better food, uh, the, the better than Daniel Jones. I'm still waiting on the proof. Give me examples. Give me games. Give me throws. Give me highlights. Give me a reason. Prove me wrong. I could point to the Detroit game. I could point to the Redskins game, the Tampa Bay game. There's games where Daniel Jones just goes in there and it's like, yo, we got the best player on the field. Name one game last year with Daniel, well not Daniel Jones, with Dwayne Haskins and Kyler Murray was the best player on the field. Name one. Listen, I got to say this about Kyler Murray. I think that he was the best player on the field versus the Falcons. He was the best player on the field versus the Browns. And again, I don't have the, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but either way, um, he beat your Giants, okay? He beat your Giants. That's one thing he did. He beat, I, I think that he was better than Matthew Stafford on the yeah, field versus yeah, Detroit. Daniel Jones got sacked like nine times there. You got, you got to realize something. Kyler Murray inherited a situation where he was honestly kind of sort of set up to fail. You know, last year the Cardinals were the worst offense in football. So he inherited the worst offense in football, a rookie head coach that had a, had a terrible record at Texas Tech, and he leads that team to almost two times their win total. They had five wins. They tied with the Lions, but they probably should have won that game. So Kyler Murray has shown that he can make up for less of an offensive line. His wide receiver play wasn't that great outside of Christian Kirk every now and then. Larry Fitzgerald is a corpse. You know, David Johnson is a corpse. Okay? So, I mean, I think Kyler Murray has shown he can elevate a team. And I do believe once you put a real team around Kyler Murray, that guy's going to dominate. And also, he was in a much more tougher division than Daniel Jones was last year. Daniel Jones was in the worst division in football by a mile. By a mile. The Cowboys were terrible. The Eagles were terrible. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop. Stop. You're bugging. How about, okay, who, who's the worst division in football then? The worst division in football? 
worst division of football? Okay, let me think. I want to it was the NFC East. Nah, the worst division of football. Mm. NFC East. I go with the South. I mean, with the, with the North. Pittsburgh, garbage. Um, okay. The Browns, garbage. The Bengals, garbage. Well, they garbage. The Steelers were eight and eight without Big Ben Roethlisberger, a starting quarterback. So I don't think the I don't think the Steelers were all that bad, Fist. I do. When your quarterback is is freaking Kyle Rudolph or Mason Rudolph, whatever, whatever, and then it's just like stop. They 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 played the Bengals. I don't want to hear it. They played the Bengals and the Browns. The Browns had a bad record, but they're still a very talented team. They're more talented than Washington. They were more talented than you guys last year. I know that. You still there, Fisk? No, I'm there. I just had to get that first down. Ah, uh, it's fourth down. Should I go Fisk? Oh, you're playing Madden. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right, so we kind of rambled around by the schedule a little bit. Let's talk about your boy, DJ. All right, now, Listen. I was not high on Dan Jones coming out of college. I just wasn't. Um, and he proved me wrong. I made a video saying that Dan, I was wrong about Daniel Jones. I think that he is a legit franchise quarterback. And I do believe that his ceiling is a top 10 quarterback. I do believe that one day he will be a top 10 quarterback in this league. Um, but you said something yesterday on, in a video that just had me puzzled. You said he's the best quarterback under 30, not named Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. You didn't even throw in Deshaun Watson's name. You didn't throw in Carson Wentz's name. You forgot Kyler Murray. You forgot Jared Goff and Jimmy G, who have been to Super Bowls. And you said he potentially could be. You for, you forgot him, Fitz. You forgot him. And listen, you think that he. I know you know what you said. You actually believe in it. It's crazy. But either way, you think Daniel Jones can be an MVP candidate next year. And honestly, Fizz, look, I understand that you're excited. Your Giants have been so trash the last seven, eight years after after winning that Super Bowl. I mean, you know, any any sign of optimism, Fizz Vegas, is going to go hi, hyperbolically crazy, in my opinion, okay? And listen, I think that you're being unrealistic because, listen, Daniel Jones is going to have a new coaching staff. A whole new, a whole new playbook. I think the offensive line will be improved with Andrew Thomas, but again, is it going to be elite? Is it going to be top ten in the league? I don't know. Outside of Darius Slayton, it are, it's his weapons all world. I know Evan Ingram has some potential, but he's been kind of inconsistent. You know, he's made of glass. And the defense, I still got to see it to believe it with his defense. I know you added some players in the off season, but either way, I just think that. If Daniel Jones is going to be MVP candidate, he's got to win games. And I've already said, I don't think the Giants are winning that many games this year. Okay, they could win, I say potentially eight wins is the best scenario. I would think six wins, seven wins is about realistic, maybe, okay? But I will say this about Daniel Jones. At Duke, he elevated a bad team. That Duke team was just not that good. I think that I kind of overlooked that because what you... Bad team too. I, I agree. The Giants did not have a great roster last year. He... He as an individual played pretty well despite what he had around him. But either way, um, I can't say this about Dan Jones. He's a very good athlete. Um, he was coached by Dave Cutcliffe at Duke. So I, look, what Dan Jones showed me was that he had pretty good coaching in college because he came in this year. He had three years under his belt and he actually looked like he, he belonged in the NFL. He was making throws that most rookies were not trying to attempt to make, um, things of that nature. And so look, I think that Daniel Jones has the potential to be, has the potential to be a top 10 quarterback, but look, he has the ability to fit the ball in the tight windows. He's got mobility, throws with touch. He's got a pretty solid deep ball. And like you said in your previous videos that you said on your podcast, um, if you pro pro rate Daniel Jones stats, he's going to probably break Baker Mayfield's touchdown pass record. If he plays all 16 games. And as you mentioned, he thrived despite having a bad offensive line, bad wide receiver play Saquon Barkley hurt and a defense that was kind of questionable. Um, I will say he needs to improve his pocket awareness. That's not very good. Um, at times, he was kind of staring down wide receivers. I think that he needs to get better at that. Um, I think his playing style this year was kind of reckless. I think that he needs to take what the defense gives him a little bit better. But again, these are things that you can improve over time, you know, as you get more experience, okay? So go into more details about what you think about Daniel Jones as a player and why you think he can become an MVP potentially this year. Well, the first thing I want to say is I'm glad you brought up all those points because he did all that. He put up with all that in 12 games with better numbers than Kyler Murray, the rookie of the year. So I'm glad you brought up all those uh, deficiencies because he, he put up with all that 
played 12 games and had better numbers than Kyler Murray. You know what I'm saying? Injuries, bad roster, bad offensive line, only played 12 games, and they had a better record than Kyler Murray. I mean, better numbers than Kyler Murray. I mean, you know. <laughs> you know the record wasn't better. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we gonna fix that this year, though. So it's all good. All right, all right. So I mean, what what do you think that the Giants need to do to make Daniel Jones the most successful? You know, and I, I gotta ask you this question: Do you want a Saquon Barkley happy offense or a Daniel Jones happy offense? I'm a quarterback guy. I think that the running back position has kind of died down. I know Saquon Barkley is dynamic. He's special. We know what he brings to the table, but it's a quarterback and coach league. Like you said, you know, if you have a great coach. You can win a lot of games, you know. If you have a great quarterback, you can win a lot of games too. You can have a terrible defense, a terrible O line, bad special teams. If you got a coach and a quarterback, you are going to thrive in some type of way. Example: Peyton Manning led four different head coaches to Super Bowls. Okay, and we've seen coaches elevate quarterbacks. Joe Joe Flacco is he an elite quarterback? Maybe in the playoffs, but John Harbaugh is a great head coach. Doug Peterson he was able to elevate Nick Foles into beating Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. So, again, there's I have questions about Joe Judge, but what do you think the Giants need to do in order to give Daniel Jones the opportunity to reach the potential that you think that he can reach, and what do you think about that? Well, that's easy. Just Joe Judge, be a, be a dictator, be an authority figure, be somebody who runs the locker room, be smart, put, make sure you put together good game plans. Make sure the team is prepared. Don't do dumbness. You know, just be a good coach. You know, do what good coaches do. And as far as Daniel Jones go, oh, just do what you've been doing. That's all. Just do what you've been doing. Everything he did was fine. Just do what you've been doing. And we got Andrew Thomas that'll cut down half his fumbles right there because he won't be hit as much. Because you know he fumbles and, a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, well, he, he won't be getting hit as much to fumble now that we got Andrew Thomas. And um, as far as the offense goes, truth be told, just, I, I like Dallas offense. I want it to be exactly what they do in Dallas. We can run Saquon 30 times a game and just let Daniel Jones be the playmaker because if you, if you, if you just transport, what I'm hoping to see from the Giants next season is the Cowboys offense of like 2014. You know what I'm saying? Cowboys offense with a great quarterback. So I'm looking for like, the Tony Romo Cowboys. I'm, I'm expecting Daniel Jones to have a uh, very Tony Romo-esque 2014 season because he's better than Dak. So I think what I, I really I, I expect the Cowboys offense on crack because he's just better than Dak. At the end of the day, he's just better than Dak. So a picture the Cowboys offense with a great quarterback. Boom. That's what I expect for the time. Yep, yep. Now, I think that Daniel Jones needs a number one wide receiver. Um, I think that Darius Slayton is a pretty good, you know, wide receiver. He showed a lot of promise as a rookie. And I think the type of wide receiver that Daniel Jones needs is kind of like a Mike Evans, you know. It would be nice for him to have potentially a Tyree kill or someone like that, but Daniel Jones throws a lot of balls in the tight windows. I think that that's what he does. He needs a Hopkins. Honestly, yeah. He needs a Hopkins, Hopkins, Michael Thomas would have been perfect. He needed a guy like that. No doubt, no doubt. So again, yeah, um, let me transition to Joe Judge. Um, look, I think that Joe Judge has been saying the right things all season. I've listened to the press conferences. He comes across as a guy that knows football. And I think that I feel better about him than Pat Sherman and Ben McAdoo simply because those guys, just in my opinion, were not that organized. I mean, sometimes the Giants weren't very competitive. They weren't disciplined. They weren't the physical blue-collar team that you've seen in the past that have won Super Bowls under Eli Manning. So my whole thing is, look, Joe Judge, he's got a lot to prove to me, okay? Because, listen, he's young. And I know he came from Nick Saban's, you know, coaching tree. I know he's been coached by – I know he's been under Bill Belichick's tutelage – but we've seen some Bill Belichick coaches not become the greatest NFL head coaches outside of maybe Brian Flores, okay? You know, usually the Bill Belichick disciples don't work as far as head coaches in the NFL. Look at Matt Patricia. He's kind of hit and miss as a head coach. Um, I take objection to that. Go ahead. Uh, I take objection to that because I think if you look at the Belichick tree objectively, Flores did fine. Yep. Bill O'Brien is the best coach in the South. 
Mike Crable went to a championship game. So as far as I'm concerned, Belichick tree looked it actually looks pretty decent right now. I mean if you just want to be technical, I mean technically speaking, his tree looks good right now. It, it looks all right. It looks all right. I think that Bill O'Brien kind of needs to go in Houston. I think that his time there is kind of, you know, ticking. I don't think that Houston's going to win anything big with Bill O'Brien. Mike Vrabel, you know, once he got a pretty good quarterback, you know, like you said, he made a pretty good run. So that's a good point. I never really thought about that. Um, But, look, I will say this about Joe Judge. He's young. He has a lot to prove. But what I like about the Giants situation is that they brought in Jason Garrett. And I didn't love Jason Garrett's play calling in Dallas, but – He's got experience. He's been a head coach before. So him being on that staff is going to help Joe Judge, in my opinion, because he's actually been a head coach in the past. Okay. So I think that, that, I think that that was a good move. So look, Joe Judge, again, I just think that I got to see what he brings to the table his first year. If Giants fans have to be patient, we, we know that things are not going to get turned around overnight. I know that you think you guys are going to win 10 or 11 games. I don't see it. I think you're about a year or two away from that. Um, what's up? You, 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 you really trigger me. What's up? I get, I get annoyed. Because people with quarterbacks don't have to be patient. I don't hear people saying, oh, the Cardinals need to be patient. I don't hear, I didn't hear people with the Eagles saying, oh, they need to be patient. When you have a quarterback, you don't need to be patient. At the end of the day, I feel like I have a top 10 quarterback. We better win 8 to 10 games. If the Giants don't win 8 to 10 games, I won't be pissed. There's no excuses. I don't want to hear well, There's no patience. Well, I don't think, I don't. Defense. We got the best running back of football. We spent our first pick on a tackle. I don't want to hear it. Get it get it done. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to hear this patience. No, get it done. We spent all that money on free agency. If you if you add Leonard Williams, we spent a, a fortune on free agencies on defense. Because Leonard Williams technically counts as a free agent acquisition because we franchise tagged him for sixteen million. True. So realistically speaking, we spent all that money on defense. And then we spent the whole draft on, on an offensive line. We spent all that money on wide receivers. Remember, we paid Tate, we paid, we paid Shepard. No matter how much I feel about, no matter what I feel about them, we paid them. As far as I'm concerned, there's no excuses for this Giants. None. Zero. If we don't win eight to ten games, heads are going to roll, and I'm going to be pissed. Bottom line, we got a great quarterback. We got Saquon. I don't want to hear it. Eight to ten wins. Shut up. Everybody in New York, every Giants fan talk about some oh, we be patient, or we're going to win five games. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Either you have confidence in the team, or you don't. All right? Because if you believe in Daniel Jones, eight games is the floor. If you don't believe in Daniel Jones, then we're going to win two games. There's no in between. Either the kid is good or he's not. You're going to sink or swim. You've seen the schedule. You're going to sink or swim. So either he's easy. Don't sit here and tell me this guy's good enough to beat Carson Wentz or he's good enough to get a win versus Pittsburgh or whatever the hell, but then tell me, oh, well, we're going to lose some team like the Browns or we don't have no chance to get the Seahawks. No. People, use common sense. If there's one thing I learned as a as a better gambling for the last 10 years of my life for a living, this one lesson I learned is do not be prisoner of the moment. Be consistent. If you believe something on Monday, don't disbelieve it on Sunday because Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, something happened. If you spend hours and hours researching something and you believe it on Monday, when Sunday comes around, don't change your mind. Give it time. So if the Giants come out here and stink up the joint in 2020, then we need to be patient. Then we rebuild. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm going in there with the expectation of we're winning eight to ten games because we got a great quarterback. We spent a hell of a lot of money on defense and we got a solid coach. Bottom line. So there's no in between. Don't flip flop. Like Giants fans last year. Get it year. done, Giants. Yes, get it done. It's like last year, oh, Daniel Jones is the worst pick ever. He's trash. We should have got Haskins. And then by like week four, when we're blowing out the Wayne Haskins and Daniel Jones won the second straight game, all of a sudden now everybody was, oh yeah, well we knew Daniel Jones was going to be good. Oh, we went on YouTube after we drafted him. <laughs> Shut up. Because you pulled him at the Yankee game two months later, so you still didn't believe. So at the end of the day, <laughs> That's true. I just want consistency. I just want consistency. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no in between. I'm holding people accountable, bro. I'm holding Giants fans accountable. 
Either you believe in Daniel Jones or you don't. Because I got news for you. Hell is hot. Water is wet. Russell Wilson wins 8 to 10 games a fucking season. And you can't tell me that that team is good. The Seahawks are garbage. He definitely He's elevates trash. that team. He does. He elevates that team. So if you have a quarterback, you will win 8 to 10 games. As bad as Carson Wentz's team was, how many games did they win last year, Juice? Nine. Nine. As bad as the deck play last year, how many games did they win, Juice? <laughs> eight. Eight. If you have a quarterback, you will win eight to ten games. So either you believe in Daniel Jones or you don't. I'm tired of Giants fans being wishy washy. Oh, we need an offensive line. Oh, what about our slot corner? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> either you believe in a quarterback or you don't. I feel, I feel. Let me get to Joe Judge a little bit more, then we'll kind of move on to something else. Um, What do you think is different about Joe Judge as a coach? Obviously, I think that what he's going to do is he's going to be a strategist. You know, what What Joe Judge talked about is that, okay, we're going to see what team we're playing. And if we need to run Saquon Barkley 30 times a game, that's what we're going to do. If we need to have Daniel Jones throw the ball 30 or 40 times, that's what we're going to do. If we need to be a ball control team this week, that's what we're going to do. I think what Joe Judge is going to bring to the Giants is a guy that can make adjustments. That's what Shermer did not do, and I don't think Ben McAdoo did that very well either. Do you agree? Yes, at the end of the day, what Shermer, well, how, how do I say this? I think Shermer was a, is a good offensive coordinator, but not necessarily a great head coach. He's not one of those guys that's going to be a general of an entire team. Because the thing is, like, the team was, the team loves Shermer. See, that's the hard part about Shermer. It's like, we don't, he wasn't a good head coach, but the team loved him. McAdoo, the team hated. What I, I think what Joe Judge brings to the, to the equation is leadership and accountability. At the end of the day, what Joe Judge wants to do is he wants to be a tough, punch you in the face team for 60 minutes. No excuses. Everybody's being held accountable. And he wants to, he, he's a strategist. He wants to actually He's from the Belichick tree. He's going to do whatever it takes to win. No game plan is the same. So what Joe Judge brings to the table is leadership. And that's something that the Giants have lacked. A true leader, a head coach. Shermer, you're not... Who's going to throw a wall for Pat Shermer? Nobody. Who's going to throw a wall for McAdoo? Nobody. My point is that. When Joe Judge go in there and deliver that hell fire and brainstorm, we're going to throw a wall. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. And I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows, or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.